Hello and welcome to another edition of Prayer Part where I am Allow Me Heavens, event veteran, media entrepreneur, and prophetic watchman. On Prayer Part where I make short videos talking about prayer and anything the Lord will have me talk about. Today I am asking the question, what are you saying? Yes, what are you saying? I'm asking you a question. And I'm going to get down to the reason why I'm asking this question. Now, a lot of times people pray and then, of course, we know that the Bible says that the promises of God are yes and amen. His words are yes and amen. He says we should ask and it shall be given unto us. He said we should seek and we will find. We should knock and the door will be opened unto us. And scripture also makes us understand that we receive not because we ask not. And then you meet people who say, I've been praying and I don't think God is hearing me. I've been praying. No answer is coming forth. I've been praying. Things are worse than it was in the beginning and so on and so forth. <laughs> now, before I go straight to what it is that I'm asking or the reason why I'm asking you this question, I would like to take us through scripture. Malachi 3. Now let's start from 13, and this is the Lord talking to Israel. He says, you have spoken arrogantly against me, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we said against you? This is the NIV. 16, number 14, 14 says, you have said it is futile to serve God. What do you gain by carrying out his requirements and going about like mourners before the almighty God? But now... We call the arrogant blessed, evildoers prosper, and even when they put God to the test, they get away with it. Now, God is saying here that these are the things they've been saying. And to God, like the beginning said, you have spoke arrogantly against me. They weren't, you know, speaking to God directly, but because they were saying these things, that you know what was the essence. What's the essence of all this prayer? What's the essence of, you know, really following God? What's those that, you know, you hear people say, those that follow God, they just stay there, you lose out, and you even hear people make songs like, you know, to be good is bad and some weird things like that. Anyways, so we go to 10. He says, then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. Some versions said the Lord listened in. They were talking to each other. The Bible says we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So you and I sit down and we're gisting and God is listening in. Isn't that interesting? It goes on to say, A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. On the day when I act, says the Lord, because while they were talking, they were, you know, honoring God. They were speaking. I will still go to another version just so that we get like two sides of the matter or three. He says, on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty, they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them. Then as the father has compassion and spares his son who served him, you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. Now he spoke about those that were arrogant as what they were saying was against what the Lord thought they should be saying because he said the power of life and death is in your tongue, right? So the Lord expected them to say good things, to say God things, but they were just maybe saying in their own mind facts because you meet people and they're talking about their issue and they tell you, well, I don't just want to ignore the facts. It's the fact. But I put it to you. That the fact is different, you know, from the truth. The truth is what the God, the word of God, pardon me, says concerning the matter. So you find people sitting down and you, maybe for the sake of gist or you, because you want to have a pity party or something. Everybody has been there, but you, you don't have to stay there. You need to correct yourself knowing that the first reason why God gave you a mouth is not just to communicate is to create things. Because if we look at the example of God in Genesis, when darkness filled the earth, his first response was not to call upon the angels and say, you know what, angel Gabriel, angel Michael, where are you? Look at how darkness is. Can you measure the darkness? Do you know how dark this is? That wasn't what God did. God actually 
brooded upon the earth. He brooded upon that darkness. He, you know, gathered energy. He brooded upon it. And then he declared, let there be. When he used his mouth, it was let there be light. It was not that, oh, describing the darkness. So a lot of times when people pray, they pray and then by what they say later on, out of that particular space, they nullify what they have said earlier on. And then they're wondering that one minute I feel like the answer is closed, another minute I feel like the answer seems to be far away or it's no longer coming. It's not God's doing. He's giving us this earth. He's told us to take dominion. He's told us to take charge, meaning that when answer comes where the one that is supposed to partake with God to ensure that we receive it. And how do we receive it is by what we say, is by what we declare. So on one side, you can't afford to declare a thing. Let's imagine that you're in church and they tell you, oh, just declare what you want. And you declare that I am made whole. You declare that the Bible says I am the healed of the Lord. And then you go to your space and then over and over again, for one reason or the other, or because of the kind of people around you, you start to buy your own confessions, nullify it, thinking that what you say in church is the only thing that matters. You forget that what you say when he says the power of life and death is in your tongue. He did not say that the power of life is in your tongue when you're in church or when you're in the gathering of the brethren or when you're in fellowship or when you're on the pulpit. He says the power of life and death is in your tongue, whether you're home, whether you're amongst friends or not. Now I'm going through and just looking at other versions of the same scripture. A lot of it says while they are speaking that the Lord comes and angels write out what they are saying. And you will think that why are they writing out what we're saying? I mean, this is not church. This is not, we're not ministering. But what God is trying to explain to us here is that even when we are out of where we think is called church in our own mind, we are the body of Christ. We are the temple of the living God. That means God lives here, meaning that whatever we say is also important. So when you pray about a thing, what are you saying after that thing? What are you saying outside the place where you think you are praying? When you're with children of God, when you're with brethren, when you're with friends, what are you saying concerning your matter? And a lot of times, when, when this happens, you can get to a place of frustration. Why are you frustrated? Because at the end of the day, it looks like God is not hearing you. But that's an impossibility. God wants to hear you even much more. He said before you even asked, he answered. When we were talking about Daniel in scripture, he says, the day you made up your mind to pray. That means the day you, it wasn't that you started praying, the day you made up your mind to pray, answer was released. He didn't say the Lord was thinking of the answer to release. He said answer was released from heaven. Now, of course, what happened after the answer was that it was withheld. Now, Daniel stayed 21 days praying. Imagine if in between maybe like day 10, Daniel decided, you know what? It seems that the fact is telling me that it's not done. And I love the way Reverend Ophara puts it. The devil can't really do a lot without you. He needs you to cooperate because, you know, it's not as powerful. God has already defeated him. He's a defeated foe. But he knows the rules. He knows the laws. He knows what can happen when you speak a particular thing. So he will put you under so much pressure to ensure that you, by your own mouth, truncate your answer. So imagine if it was, let's say, day 15 or day 20 even, before the day 21. And let's say Daniel decided that, you know what? The fact seems that the answer is not, is not here. I've been praying day and night. I've not received anything. So, and then someone would just come to Daniel if it was modern time and say, bro, or sis, this prayer you're praying is just too much. You've been praying since. As they say, now you killed Jesus. Well, to answer you was because of me, he died. It was because of me he died. And they ask you this question, and maybe because you don't want to seem too spiritual, as people say, and by the way, the spiritual controls the physical. We're not this body. We're the spirit that lives in the body, so our body is like, you know, an outfit we're wearing. So, yes, <laughs> I'd rather be too spiritual <laughs> than be too carnal. 
and then they ask you and if it's now you want to feel like oh i'm not all that i'm just i'm not it's not like i'm not facing reality and then you now say yes i know i know that um, i'm just let's just pray it i know it might not answer that answer tell it goes back it goes right back to where it's coming from and it means that you start from the very beginning you start from the very beginning and that's dreadful now let me read another version it says then they spoke who fear this is the end um kjv he says then those who feared the lord spoke to one another and the lord listened and heard them that means they were just talking to one another they didn't invite god they didn't say in jesus name we are going to have a conversation but the lord says the bible says in malachi 3 that the lord heard he listened and heard them so a book and because he listened and heard their conversation so a book of remembrance was open was written because of him for those who fear the lord and those who meditate on his name it what they weren't praying here they were talking to each other and scripture says the lord heard them and because they feared the Lord and they were talking, a book of remembrance was open. And he, you know, like we read earlier on, he said that when I take action, that's why when you have the opportunity to pray for your nation, pray for your government, pray for a leader, no matter how dreadful it might seem to you, avoid everything that will make you use the same mouth that you're using to pray or declare over that person, over that country, over that institution, from saying something negative about it. Like, for instance, you're praying for a nation. You might be in any nation of the world, UK, Canada. I'm in Nigeria at the moment. And I'm praying for Nigeria. I am a watchman to the nation. You will never see me sit down with people and start saying dreadful things about my nation. Because I know how important what I say is. I know how important it is. So when they say, Oh, you know, something dreadful is happening. My first response is prayer. So when you come and you say, oh, this nation, and you say the opposite of what good is, I tell you that this nation is good in Jesus' name. This nation is moving forward in Jesus' name. To some people, they might think, oh, she's being delusional. She's, you know, she's pretending. She's, you know, she doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to face the facts. I know what's going on. But I'm going to do what the scripture tells me to do. I'm going to declare. I'm going to say what I want to see. And as I declare, it comes to pass. So I want to, I want to just, you know, admonish you today that watch what you say. Decide what you say. Be like God in Genesis who says, let there be light. You don't have to describe the darkness. This dar darkness is there. Well, but what is scripture saying concerning your issue? As much as possible, every time you have the opportunity to talk concerning your life, to speak concerning your nation, to speak concerning the situation you're in, it is an opportunity for you to declare concerning that situation. So when you are declaring concerning the situation, will you say something negative? You won't. You will say something positive. So I've asked you the question, what are you saying? And I would... I would want you to be positive constantly, speaking the word of God, agreeing with what God has said concerning you in scripture. Look for that light in scripture. Declare it over yourself. The Bible says, let the rich, let the poor say that I am rich. Let the weak say that I am strong. It's an example of what we should do. I would end the video here so that it's not too long, but I pray that you understand what I'm saying. You've heard and you start to practice it. Father Lord, we thank you. For this time that we've shared together thank you father for what you are doing and how you keep teaching us i ask oh lord that you help by the by the spirit of the living god to guard our heart and guard our tongues in the name of jesus that you will help us to cooperate with you by speaking your life and your light over everything that concerns us in the name of jesus that you will help us oh lord to realize that we are in the world but we are not of the world and so that we know that our engagement our mode of engagement is different from that of the world and that by your spirit we are able to speak and walk according to your will for us in the name of jesus amen and amen thank you so much once again for joining me today have an outstanding week till i come your way again keep speaking god's life and light over your household your household your family your country and everything that concerns you amen